Welcome back to Trader UK, Adam here. Today I'm going to share with you a few key dates and a few big catalysts that are on the horizon for the solid state battery technology company that is Ilica. I am going to share with you their proposed timeline so we can start to get a better understanding of when we can expect to see more progress on this one. Make sure you are sticking around until the end because we actually have one year in particular where they have two big catalysts coming together which are going to drive this company forward so make sure you stick around and find out when that is now as we know Ilica have their two battery projects ongoing they have their Steriax line which are their micro batteries used in internet of things devices and in medical devices as well and then they have their larger form Goliath project um, which are suitable for EVs and for consumer uh, appliances as well the two battery projects that they have ongoing are at different stages of commercialization. The smaller batteries have made more progress and are closer to the mass market as it stands at the moment. If you don't know anything about this company, it is a little bit comparable to Quantum Scape, which is much more well known, much bigger, much more valuable, much bigger market cap. Um, and taking a slightly different approach, a slightly different route to market. Ilica is there for the smaller, much cheaper, less well-known UK-based alternative, um, but with similar technology. And from what I understand, what I can gather, they're probably not too far off um, quantum scape in terms of that technology readiness. Now, Ilica stock has been having an absolute terrible time recently. The share price has been, well, in a downward spiral here since earlier in the summer. It picked up a little bit of momentum just for a short period of time in July, but then it has just really continued that downward trend. Um, now, there hasn't really been any substantial news, nothing newsworthy, no newsworthy events that have kind of caused this. Um, there was in July a raising of capital though. Uh, they placed shares with institutional investors and with retail investors as well, um, for which that was fully subscribed. They raised about £21 million, I think it was. Um, of course, that has diluted uh, existing shareholdings a bit. At that time, before they did the, that capital raise in July, um, the share price was about £2 a share. And they offered a 30% discount on that price. So shares were placed at £1.40 each, which at the time I actually thought was a, a pretty good price. I thought that represented pretty good value. But... I didn't actually exercise my rights at that point because I wanted to see what was going to happen with the share price. And luckily for me, well, luckily as someone who wants to add to my position um, and unlucky as someone who has an existing shareholding, the share price has actually continued, you know, following that £1.40 offering, continued downwards. Uh, and around this £1.15, it's been down to £1.10. That, around that sort of mark, we're at 20% below that discounted price of £1.40, which was already discounted at 30% from, from £2. Uh, and you have to remember that was fully subscribed by institutions and retail investors. So at £1.40, when they raised £20-odd million, pound, those investors felt like £1.40 uh, was representative of good value. So there seems to be a little bit of resistance here at the £1.10 level. Um, so potentially this is a good entry point and I have actually been adding here as well. As always with Ilica though, we know that this is not going to be, you know, an overnight sensation, this company. It's going to take time and a lot of time. It's a, a long-term hold, this one. Um, they're nowhere near mass market with their current products. Um, and the problem with that, their earnings are way out in the future. So inflation is a big kick for them at the moment. Um, and probably what has caused a lot of this downward pressure that we've been seeing. The Bank of England recently have sort of, not announced, but they have said that they will be raising rates in the short term, uh, in the near term. So uh, possibly by the end of the year or early next year, that's going to happen. So although I have been adding here at this sort of £1.10 mark, I think £1.12 I added that yesterday, um, 
I wouldn't be too surprised if we did see it break below that following any announcement of, of rate hikes. Those profits that are way out in the future are just getting eaten away at by inflation, unfortunately. So we'll have to keep an eye on that because at the moment, the only income really for Illica is government grants and then a little bit of um, sales of prototype batteries. So uh, yeah, any any income that they do have is way out in the future and it's getting eroded away out by inflation. Before I do move on to the first catalyst for Illica, uh, if I can ask you a huge favor, if you could like the video for me, that will help me out with the infamous YouTube algorithm. And of course, you can subscribe to the channel for more similar content. We're actually approaching 5,000 members on the channel now, so we're growing nicely. We've got a good community going on. So thank you to everyone who has already subscribed and thank you to anyone that subscribes from here onwards. Now, I am always comparing Illica with QuantumScape because they're both working on solid state batteries, um, but they do have very different business models. QuantumScape seem to be targeting gigafactory type manufacturing, that type of scale. Um, and it can be very expensive to go down that route. It costs about half a billion to $750 million per gigafactory plus all the infrastructure that's needed for it uh, to sort of roll out that kind of manufacturing. So very expensive, very capital intensive. Uh, the model that Illica are taking though, is to manufacture a small volume on what they call a pilot line, and then they ramp up to mid scale production. And then the final step is to get up to gigafactory kind of scale uh, and beyond that as well. But they will do that, the gigafactory scale, by entering into a joint venture and licensing the IP to an existing uh, battery manufacturer. So Illica's model should be much less capital intensive. And supposedly that 20 odd million or 21 million pound that they did raise should be 70% of what they need to get up to mass production. And taking a look at the catalysts that we do have on the horizon for Illica, really we've got two different timelines that are going on. We've got the Steriax line, uh, which is moving from stage one of that plan, which is their pilot line, small scale production. And they're moving on to stage two, which is in-house mid-scale production or manufacturing. The clean room that they commissioned to be built for that Steriax line, which is where the batteries end up getting manufactured and built, is now complete, it's been delivered. The equipment that they had to order, specialist equipment, is supposedly now on site. Uh, and this means that they can ramp up production 70x what they were doing on their pilot line. So 70 times the volume, which is a, a big jump. Now, it's gonna be very difficult to know exactly what this looks like in terms of revenue for the company. Um, I don't suspect that it's gonna be huge revenue because this is more about not proof of concept, but proof that there is an addressable market with sufficient demand to fill that increased volume 70 fold and proof that the manufacturing can be done at scale as well. Because once they prove these things, um, once they do that in house and the demand outweighs what they can supply, then it's very easy for a larger manufacturer to pick up the model essentially in this article that i have here which was actually based on when illica were going to outsource the manufacturing process um, but it was based on using the same equipment which i imagine it's the equipment that's a, the limiting factor in terms of volume um, they were suggesting 12.5 million pound on that maximum 70x capacity so clearly it's not going to be huge but it is a big step towards commercialization they're no longer going to be selling a few samples here and there off their pilot line uh, this will actually represent real revenue from real customers not in the form of a grant from the government which is what they've had previously or or tend to recognize in the financial statement so real revenue from the real world buyers that's going to be a very big catalyst for this company. Not only is it going to look very good to existing investors like myself to finally see that revenue um, start flowing through to the financial statements, 
It's also going to give people a, a very good idea of the demand for their product and what kind of margins they're going to achieve as well. In terms of a timeline for this Steriax project, um, when we can expect to see that revenue in the financial statements, Ilica have suggested that commercial manufacturing will start in early 2022 and sales by the end of Q2 2022. So really, you're looking at about eight months or so from now. Between now and then, we could get a smaller catalyst or a number of smaller catalysts if they start taking significant orders. Uh, but because that volume is still quite low, because the, the maximum achievable turnover is 12.5 million, how big can those orders really be? Um, so I think that's unlikely to be big. But we're really what we're looking at is the end of Q2 2022 for their first catalyst on the Steriax line. Following on from there, the next big catalyst for Steriax would come in 2024. That's when Ilica will progress from mid-scale production and manufacturing to large scale. And that will, they'll do that by entering into a, a joint venture, most likely, or licensing the, the intellectual property out to a third party. Now, it is, again, impossible, completely impossible to put numbers to that yet. But the market for those micro batteries is much more mature than it is for the large form for Goliath batteries. Um, so you would expect demand to build quickly. So the catalyst in 2024, I believe, will be a lot bigger than the one we're going to see in eight months time. And as for the Goliath project, the large form batteries, which, like I said, they're a little bit further behind. They're further away from reaching mass market. Um, I don't really see any big catalysts on the immediate horizon. Uh, the first one I would say would be mid-2024, unless in the meantime they do take on some more partnerships uh, and they get mentioned along with more EV manufacturers or, or battery manufacturers, which you can actually see here. They have existing partnerships at the moment ongoing with Honda, with McLaren, and also with Jaguar Land Rover, which could be extended. That would be a big catalyst for them. Um, but the 2024 catalyst that I'm talking about, that's going to be when they, they step up to the UK Battery Industrialization Centre to mid-scale manufacturing, which would 100x their capacity of Goliath cells from what they're going to be doing on their pilot line. Again, this is going to be a big catalyst for them because it represents proof of scalability and a readiness at that point. Once they get to that point, it's a readiness for a, a big manufacturer um, or third party to come in and license the IP from them. Um, licensing the IP and, and going, uh, you know, large scale manufacturing, that's not going to happen for another two years after that. So we've got a big catalyst coming in 2024 and then even bigger again in what will most likely be 2026 by the time that happens. Now, of course, the catalysts that we're talking about are based on this current timeline or projected timeline, which obviously could change. But one thing that I have found investing in Ilica and following the company is that they've been pretty good up to this point with their rollout and with their timeline, you know, and, and based on this timeline and ignoring other factors, to me, it looks like 2024 is going to be that pivotal year for both investors and for the company itself, because we have a catalyst from the Steriax line going into large scale manufacturing, really ramping it up. Um, and we also have the Goliath line, which will be moving to a mid scale manufacturing model at the, the UK BIC. Between now and then, I'll be looking at these dips as buying opportunities, and I'm going to be keeping a very close eye on the revenue that starts to get recognised uh, in Q2 next year, and we'll take a look at the margins that, that start to get recorded there. I am aware, though, that this is a very, very long-term play. This, again, isn't going to be an overnight sensation. Um, you have to be in this one for, for a long hold. If you look at the chart here, on the left hand side, each bar represents the overall um, battery demand in Europe and the US combined. The purple is demand for traditional battery types. And then the blue shows how solid state battery demand is expected to ramp up and to pick up over time. But 
what you can see is that demand won't really be kicking in until 2026 and beyond for solid state batteries. So really, you have to be in it for the long run because holding a company like Ilica, who's at the moment only real earnings come from grant money from the UK government, um, it can be pretty painful come earnings time. I would also be hopeful that once they start to recognize income and once they start to ramp up that Stereax line next year, there's going to be significant demand from what is a one trillion sensor market within the, the IoT market there. So we'll see how that builds from Q2 next year. As always, let me know what you think down in the comments below. What do you think of Ilica? Is this one going to be the future of solid state battery technology in the UK anyway? Or do you think this one is a no go? Let me know what you think. That is everything for today. Thank you as always for watching and I'll see you next time.